Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of the podcast. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we're trying to grow our channel and as we continue on with the podcast, we want to start new forms of content. We want to start posting our work here on YouTube. So if you want to see some of that and continue supporting the podcast, please subscribe. Enjoy the episode. Ba-da-da-da. The yellow stick. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Exordia Creative Podcast, podcast, podcast. Little FX. Little FX. Jared, I'm tired. When did you wake up today? I'm tired. I don't do this all the time. I do it for, I do it sometimes when, when people ask very nicely. I was up at five o'clock this morning. Oh. Walk us through it. I was up at five o'clock this morning. So we just started working with Rekindle. We shared a little bit on our Instagram story when we were doing the shoot. Um, yes. And I want to get some shots of him in his, in his shop. So we're going back and forth because I had to take my dog to Windsor today to get uh, spayed. We'll get into that too. That was at eight o'clock. So I had to, anyway, I was up at like five o'clock, got to LP Wood at like 5.30ish. Yeah. Took some photos. They turned out killer. But I am not a fan of getting up at 5. No. Now, I typically get up at like 7.30. That's like my norm. That's a huge difference. Though. It is. It is. And so I went to bed at 10 last night. Yeah. And you didn't want to. Didn't and want you were to. laying in bed not being able to fall asleep instantly. Exactly. You know. I'm just tired. Yeah. I'm just tired. It's all relative. If you have to wake up, like go to bed an hour early or even two hours early, it's impossible. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. So I'm a little tired. Anyway, we're excited to be working with Rekindle on this. Uh, on that, we're doing some photos, some videos, some ads. Yeah. Um, so we're looking forward to that. He's a re- he's got a really really cool brand, and now we just gotta. So you saw Devin in his natural habitat. Yes. Yeah. He's got a sweet espresso machine. Yeah. He does. I mean, you gotta do something to wake up. At. He does. Yeah. So he's doing that because you of... met at five thirty. He's up at like maybe four thirty four. I don't know what time he was Ooh. up. I didn't. Yeah. Anyway. That's crazy. So it went well. Very cool products. Um, we have a ton of it over there. I should have, we should have had like a prop or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, guys, so we're going to be bringing his brand to life, so to speak, putting it in front of the right people. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So I also took off to Windsor this morning. Right. For Stella. At, at eight. And I wasn't sure yes. if I'd have to stay. I didn't know how long this surgery was going to be. Mm-hmm. So I get there at eight. Um, it's kind of st- unfortunate logistics. Of- it's also Stella's birthday. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. So she, so she got spayed on her birthday. Sorry, baby. But um, yeah. Happy birthday, Stella. Happy birthday, Stella. So it's like her true birthday or the day you took her home? Birthday? No, this is her true birthday. Wow. Yeah. yeah. We Happy got her birthday. November 6th. How old is she? She's one. So she's seven. So she's seven. Oh, you're in the, I don't know if it's terrible sevens or she's, good sevens. She's smarter than most seven-year-olds that I know. <laughs> I don't know a lot of seven-year-olds. She's bigger too. Yeah, she's a big dog. Anyway, maybe one day when she chills out a little bit, um, because she's still in like her puppy phase, we can bring her on the podcast. (laughs) You said you don't know many seven year olds. I don't. I don't don't know. Same man. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, so Stella had her surgery this morning. I wasn't sure how long it was going to be. I was willing to stay in Windsor for a certain amount of time. Yeah, but like, yeah, Windsor's Windsor's kind of like sickness, um, virus ridden yeah. so to speak so i didn't want to get in get out get in get out kind uh-huh. of thing so anyway they told me that i was going to be able to pick her up at five so i said see you later yeah. so after this podcast i'm heading back to windsor to pick up the old pup on her b-day not the best logistics but no and they also stuck a chip in her too interesting a yeah. neural link a neural link <laughs> a, a successful link. surgery is a good birthday present. i called at 12 to yeah. see how it went she just got out she's chilling good so good, good. all is good everything yeah. went well we used to have friends in windsor because they studied at the university mm-hmm. and you know you can go see them when you're in windsor but now we don't really have that and it's yeah. covid so exactly i wasn't gonna go sit in, i don't even know if they're in stage three i don't know what i can do yeah who knows so i did bring all my stuff expecting to be able to sit like my laptop oh okay editing stuff like just in case but i cruised on back yeah that's yeah. the reality of it. Yeah. So you sent us four times. You sent us like an ominous Snapchat over the weekend about about Neuralink, and I know what Neuralink is. Okay. But I didn't know what you were talking about. It was a your live, photography on Snapchat's been kind of whack too. It was a live but anyway. stream. Listen, listen. I'm not the photographer <laughs> <laughs> in, in in this business. I don't get paid enough to to try on my photos. But yeah, it was a live stream. Yeah. Um. Friday night. Okay. So if you're wondering what a what a cool guy like me gets up to on a Friday night, I'm watching the Neuralink live stream. Okay. So this is a a company by Elon Musk. You know the man behind Tesla, PayPal, 
SpaceX. Mm-hmm. He also launched some rockets this weekend. Wicked. Big anyway, weekend. Yeah, yeah. It was a huge weekend. This guy's doing a lot. But if you don't know, Neuralink is basically a, a brain computer machine, which sounds like a really like blunt, obvious term, but that's what it's called. It's a brain computer machine, and it's implanted into you. It's a chip, and... It almost has so many potential functions that it can be overwhelming to think about or or difficult to describe. But anyway, the purpose of the live stream, it was a recruitment event. So it was to get people excited um, about the company and what they're doing and get people involved. I think right now they have maybe less than 200 employees and they want several thousand. So this is something that's been in the works since 2017. I think the company was founded. Yeah, it's been a it's relatively small team when you consider the the size of the project they're trying to take on. But basically, the main focus of Neuralink technology is for um, helping and healing brain and spine damage. So a lot of disease and and sickness and disability is all caused from like brain and spine problems. That could be anything from like a physical disability like paralysis, to seizures, to memory loss, to hearing loss and sight loss. So there's this whole array of different problems that this is aiming to fix. But it also has a lot of possible convenience applications. Like you could play music in your brain. You could uh, browse the internet from your brain. Like it would be an output device just like a smartphone would be or just like a computer would be, except you control it by thinking. Yeah. So instead of taking my phone out of my pocket and dialing a number and making a phone call, I could think that I want to call somebody and communicate with them that way. Yeah. It would boost productivity by quite a bit. Yeah. And what the hardware looks like, is it not like about the size of a quarter that they put into your brain or whatever, however big a quarter is? Yeah, I think it's approximately that And then big. they drive some wires into your brain and that's kind of how it works? Right. So I think what they do is it's basically like to install it, it's, it's installed by like a robotic surgeon. Mm-hmm. And what they do is they make uh, an incision in your skull, like probably the size of a Canadian quarter or something like that. And they remove the piece of the skull Mm -hmm. and then this thing fits in and they seal it so it becomes flush with your skull and then there are little little wires which conduct like the electricity to the chip conduct the biz right they did a pig demo so they call it like three little pigs because they had three pigs there yeah and um one of the pigs had the neural link implanted okay one of the pigs did not okay and the third pig had a neural link implanted and already removed prior. Wow. So they were just showing that like you can still be happy and healthy with the neural link in, but also you can be happy and healthy if you choose to have it removed later. Which which begs the question like what are the updates and upgrades going to going to look like for this thing? It'll probably look a lot like Tesla. Tesla's just become new machines basically every software update. Right, that's the thing. So yeah. I wonder what what limits is the hardware gonna have right because it'd be it'd be nice to up, update the software yeah and I think you charge it um you, you charge it kind of like uh kind of like a wireless charger it's similar to like um what a cochlear implant is for people with hearing loss you know the thing that goes yep. outside of your head yeah so it's kind of like that the way you charge it but I wonder like to what extent can you update the software without having to update the hardware because then there comes a point where you have to remove something from your brain. Yeah. Could you imagine if it turns into like the Apple iPhone releases, except people are lining up out the door to get their new Neuralink right. hardware every, right. se- every September? No, it's crazy. insane. It's crazy to think about. Yeah. So this is like so fundamentally different from any type of like wearable technology. It's hard to even begin to imagine Yeah. the, the application the possibilities. possibilities. Yeah. yeah. So like first and foremost... It's for disability and improving cognitive function and this and that. Yeah. But there was talk of being able to replay memories. There was talk of being able to reduce sensation of pain. Yeah. So if you have a disability with extreme pain, you could reduce it. Um, on the contrary, obviously, like the negative possibilities are insane. Right. Like if you guys know the show Black Mirror, they touch on like some concepts similar to this. Oh, yeah. 
But if something like this were were sabotaged, um, just like you could maybe hack a phone and you could um, remote view a phone or you could remote control a computer. Imagine if you could do that to a neural link connected to your brain. Yeah. You know, so that's it's so scary to think about. Yeah. But then like we always talk about, you have to weigh out the pros and the cons. No, for Will sure. You get more convenience out for of it. Sure. Definitely. Yeah. So right out the gate. I don't think that this was for recruiting. This is just a marketing tactic, 100%. Well, if Elon were to send out an email or whatever to somebody and say, hey, we're looking for people, he has hundreds of thousands of people in his DMs, oh, right? yeah. in his in his inbox, oh, yeah. hitting him up. So more than anything, I think this was a marketing play. Yeah, it's multifaceted for, for sure. sure. For sure. That was an emphasis, so. though, like they need help as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think the cons outweigh the potential for the pros, by any means yeah but it's just you can become a superhuman yeah it's just an entirely new realm of possibilities yeah. where do you even begin to think about that it's insane and elon has gone on record in saying that he's scared of ai but like i think he just wants us to become the ai well and that that's also what he says right yeah. like he's, yeah he's like uh he's prophesized how bad um situations could get if we let ai advance too quickly mm-hmm. to properly regulate it and control it and if maybe the ai has one objective that would be um easier completed if if it had to kill a human yeah or something like that then that could get really scary really fast so i think his kind of thesis about integrating ourselves with ai is that we stand a better chance to remain competitive against ai if we integrate ourselves with it yeah which we already are to a large extent. We like are. Your your phone is just is basically connected to you. Yeah. yeah. Right. The, you feel like a sense of pain and anxiety if you don't have your phone on you. If, mm-hmm. you're, if you're from our generation. Yeah. Like think about that. You're already so integrated with it. This is like that next step. Remember right. how we were talking about like the phone? I, this was a couple episodes ago. But when is the phone just going to be a part of us? Yeah. Maybe this is that answer. This is that answer. Yeah. For sure. So then where does the Apple of the world fit in? Where does the Google of the world fit in, right? I don't know. Maybe you could have like Apple APIs or Apple extensions Crazy. in your Neuralink. Yeah. Or you could download Neuralink apps yeah. and stuff like that. Like yeah. this place, this, um, some of the, they did a Q and A yep. with some of the staff and bear in mind, like these guys are the, the nerdiest, most technology enthused people in America pretty much. Mm-hmm. And they were all like bragging about the types of video games that could run. <laughs> like you could play Starcraft on a, on a Neuralink, which is a very like processing yeah. intensive game, yeah. which speaks to how powerful this stuff is. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Well, cause our brains are also very powerful too. Right. They are. So Elon comes to you, Jared, emails you, says, Jared, I want to put a Neuralink in your dome. Would you do it? I'm going to wait. So they did just so you wouldn't be you wouldn't be in the first 100. I wouldn't be in the first 100. I don't think they just received what's called a breakthrough technology designation from the FDA, which means the Neuralink team can work alongside the FDA and they help them bring the product to market and make sure that they satisfy all like the regulatory compliance and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. which is a really big deal because they've been in operation for three years. So this is hopefully going to start expediting the process of of getting it working. I don't think I want to be anywhere near the first hundred or thousand or ten thousand. Um, it's going to depend. They talked a little bit about cost. They didn't give any concrete numbers. Um, initial cost is going to be very expensive. Oh yeah, obviously. But what they want to do is get it down to um, somewhere around like LASIK surgery. So maybe around like five thousand U.S. Okay. Yeah, eight thousand Canadian kind of thing. There's um, and, that's and, so worth it. Well, it's going to get even cheaper, right? I know, I know, but that would be like. And obviously, I, I, I agree with your sentiment. Yeah. I do not want to be the first hundred. I don't want to be the first thousand. Right. But like eight grand to ha- to have your mind become a super machine. Right. Yeah. So the amount of like moral and ethical uh, questions that you have to ask is enormous. Like um, it's performance enhancing mm-hmm. in many industries. Mm-hmm. Right. So how do you regulate that in like uh, schools or in competitive environments yeah. where some people have it and some people don't. Yeah. And you know, it's in the, in the, in the meantime, before this becomes super widespread and everybody has it, it's going to be like the haves and the have nots. And you're going to have a significant advantage if you have this thing that other people don't. Yeah. There's, there's this law or principle called rights law, which basically states that like for every, 
every cumulative addition or every cumulative doubling of products that are made, there's a there's a slope downward in the cost of price. Mm-hmm. So you can you can map out like how some brand new technology is going to cost like hundreds of thousands to yep. make the first one. Yep. And then eventually we're going to get to the point where it's five thousand dollars or same with like the big and cheaper, like the big screen TV. For example, when my dad Anything. first bought a big screen TV, it was like five thousand dollars. And yeah. now you can go to Best Buy and you can get one for five hundred bucks. You can get a huge one. This TV that we got was like five hundred bucks, and it's like a yeah that would have cost ten, like maybe even ten grand if you were to bring that out ten years ago. Yeah. So yeah. So it's really cool to think about how this becomes more accessible. But in the meantime, there's going to be a really interesting disparity of who's having it. Who, who can use it, who can afford to reap the benefits of it. Mm-hmm. And like, I couldn't even begin to think about the benefits. It's of insane. Some technology like it's this. It's insane. Yeah. Like to replay memories. That's crazy. And, and like the, the pessimist in me is like, if you can minimize pain sensations and somebody were to hijack this device, they can maximize pain yeah. sensations. Yeah. So they like could... the possible applications on that end are yeah. incredibly disturbing. Better download Norton antivirus. Yeah. But again, it's like, it's like anything, right? You have to look at the potential. Yeah. benefits yeah so yeah I'm, I'm curious to see how this is gonna gonna progress um i think elon also said in an interview that he's devoting less than like one percent of his time to this project yeah which is maybe in part an ego thing mm-hmm. just be like oh that's not even you know yeah it's, maybe it's a little bit more than one percent but i think he's got you know a lot of huge projects on the go like he also launched a rocket as the boring company there's Tesla. Pigs and rockets, baby. Yeah. It's a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. So who knows? He's Is the solar roof still a thing? Yeah. Solar City, is that yeah. what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's somehow integrated with Tesla. Yeah. They have a really important um something called the Battery Day coming up, which is like an expo where they basically make some announcements about the battery advancements that they've been working on. Mm-hmm. And batteries are the number one thing that's prohibiting Tesla to become cheaper. Yeah. Battery technology, it's, it progresses a lot slower and innovation happens a lot slower than, than generally the other things around it. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, Tesla would be way more accessible. They'd be years ahead if they could just improve the battery technology faster. Yeah. So later this month, there's potentially some big news. Um, I think the CEO of Panasonic has been hyping them up saying he sees a lot of potential in what they're doing. Cool. But it's going to be a big announcement. So I think things are kind of on the down. That's this week. No, it's like September 20th, 21st, okay. Okay. something like that. Cool, man. That's something to look forward to. Yeah. yeah Do you have any Tesla merch or like? No. Okay. No. I, I would love to have a Tesla maybe yeah. someday. Yeah. But, you know. Like, You'll get one someday. Yeah. Like I said, rights law, right? If it keeps getting cheaper, then yeah. eventually it's so accessible that anybody can have it. And that's what's really exciting. Yeah. Because like these fringe one-time applications are kind of cool. But when the masses can have something, then that's that's like what it's all about yeah and we've seen that in technology and it's actually progressed a lot quicker than i thought for example like the first cell phone costing we talked about with the tvs yeah everything eventually becomes cheaper to to produce so that's awesome cool Mm -hmm. even like in spite of inflation we look at like what you can do with an iphone Mm -hmm. and you say it, it it's expensive now but what we look at like primitive cell phones where they were huge and clunky and they could save like like thousands of dollars And, and you look at what you can get now. Yeah. Even like a cheap Android for like a hundred bucks, yeah. 70 bucks. Yeah. It's insane. It's crazy. Yeah. Do you remember the Firefly phones? Um, not off the top of You had of like head. three contacts. It was like for kids. So you only had like three contacts I know the and 911. I don't know anyway. Firefly though. Anyway, that was, that was one of the brands. Yeah. Just made me think of that. Huh. They definitely don't exist anymore. No, I don't remember that. The first, the first phones that I was really into that I thought were really cool we're like the Motorola Razor. Oh, that's, yeah. that's gonna age me. That's gonna that thing. That thing was sick. That's gonna date me. Yeah, that was cool. Um, the Palm Pre before the iPhone. That yeah. was a big one. Sony Xperia was the first phone you could play music on. Okay, yeah, that was huge. Yeah. Um, that one was big. I think actually, I think actually, it was a Motorola was the first that could play okay. music. Yeah. Because it was an Apple partnership, and that was like the Apple phone before the iPhone. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. BlackBerry was absolutely enormous all Massive. over the world, and in Canada, we were like, we had a lot of pride about uh, research in motion because they were right in our backyard. Yeah. Now BlackBerry's a different story. Yeah. BlackBerry kind of reminds me of like IBM. Mm-hmm. You know, they're enterprise focused. They're about like security and business, but they kind of missed the mark with. They really did. Consumer. They but really when did. we were in like grade eight, grade nine, 
Blackberry was huge. I got my Blackberry in grade nine. Yeah. I, had, I think you and I had the bolts. Yeah, I had a at least one Blackberry in my day. There's yeah. BBM. And you had a bold because I remember it. It had that wheel on it. No, 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 no. You had the one with the touch. It was a Blackberry bold. It did have a touch. Screen. And then I think you had a torch too. I did not have a torch. I remember I remember the torch. The torch slid up. The torch up. slid up and had that yeah. touch screen. No, I didn't have that one. I remember I loved mine, loved the keyboard. Yeah. And then BBM baby. Yeah. And then around like the iPhone 4, I'm like, okay, there's there's no debate anymore. Yeah. Apple's better. Yeah. But yeah, that first iPhone event. Yeah. In 2007, that was insane. I still remember I went to like Future Shop <laughs> to go see it. I wanted to see it. Yeah. I asked my parents to drive me there. Yeah. And it, I was blown away. Yeah. Crazy man, how far technology yeah. has come mm -hmm. since then. Yeah, we have a little bit of social media news. What's up? Instagram released this thing on their website on like their business thing. They're cracking down on uh, people buying followers, people doing engagement groups, people oh, doing they? like like for like, follow really? for follow, that stuff. Um, and so it's kind of sketchy if you're in, in, like doing any of these things and they find your account suspicious. They will send you a request for verification of your identity. So you can use like your SIN number, your driver's license, like all that kind of stuff. I love these platforms, but they have far too many security breaches to get my banking info. Like they were talking like void check, but you can't black anything out. Like some crazy, crazy stuff. And I just like, I'm not too sure about the security on that, giving them, giving them that kind of information. Not that we don't, we don't engage in that kind of stuff, but. Two questions. First of all, are you not aware that Facebook stores our banking info as well as several of our customers' banking info? So no, that but, ship has sailed, my friend. No, I'm talking about like a literal void check, your SIN number. Yeah. Like stuff like that. Yeah. I get that they have it. Facebook's got like 15 of our, of our customers' credit cards on hand. No, I understand that. I understand that. But like all of that super, per like your driver's license number. That's I the don't least know. of my concern at this point. I it's like we were talking last week. I feel like you're way less concerned about it than well, me. We were talking about it last week. You know, your security and your personal information has already been compromised in so many ways. I know. You're like just clinging on to the threads of, of what's left. I know. And it's kind of sad <laughs> because these companies could completely ruin your life if they I know. wanted to. I know. Anyway, you know? so I just, like they already have enough shit. Like just. And my other question, if you're buying followers. Mm-hmm you're probably buying them for your own account. So what good does verifying your own identity do? Shouldn't they be verifying the identity of the so-called people who are following you? No, they're, they're verifying your account. Like they want to make sure that it's actually you doing it. Okay. But let's say I buy followers Yeah. and I get the verification request. Yeah. Instagram doesn't like that. I'm buying followers and I say, here's my ID. Here's a void check. It's really me. Yeah. I've still bought the followers. So what does that accomplish? They're still going to ask. Me. They're still going to ask for your stuff. And then they can also delete your account now too. Like they're not even going to be giving like strikes and stuff. Oh, okay. So Pretty maybe hectic. they're kind of reverse engineering a situation where if I don't like you, I'm going to buy followers for your account just to get you in trouble. Maybe they're anticipating that that happened. And that could be brutal. Trying yeah, to that figure could, out, yeah. trying to make sure that the person who bought the followers is the one getting punished, not the person yeah. who's receiving the followers. Yeah. So that'd be an easy way if you don't like somebody to try to get their account banned. Mm -hmm. Buy them some followers. Yeah. Here's a hundred thousand followers. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Enjoy. Yeah, you're you're more open about the whole privacy thing. I think I'm just more pessimistic about it. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. What do you mean? Like I know that they have the information in the back of my mind, mm -hmm. but I don't want them to ask for it and have me take a freaking picture of my ID. I just I don't know. Fair I don't enough. know. As it, as ignorance if, is bliss, baby. Yeah, as if the banks are some saints, you know. <sighs> Yeah, see, we could go down As this whole. We could, we, could, saints, right? <laughs> we could go down this whole rabbit hole. You know what? Facebook. I'm gonna send you guys all my shit after this. Like there are people with good and bad intentions everywhere. That's that's the way that I look at yeah. it. Yeah. Anyway, well, there are some people. I'm sure maybe even somebody that's watching this that doesn't know that they have all that shit. Yeah. So now, if you screw around on the platform, you're gonna send them your shit. Well, one more tie-in. Just given that we we're talking about Tesla and security breaches. Yeah. Supposedly, somebody offered a tesla employee a million dollars to install malware in one of their systems and the employee uh declined it declined the offer damn yeah so it was apparently somebody who traveled from russia yeah who i don't know how they met this um tesla employee but they were like trying to befriend them whining and dining them and eventually they said half a million if you 
install this certain type of malware. And the person I think had already made up their mind that they were going to do the right thing. And they said, no, I need a million to do it. And then this, this person who had traveled from Russia said, I need to consult with my people. We'll see if we can swing the million. And I think eventually they did. And then the Tesla employees started getting in contact with the FBI and the whole thing de-escalated. Why has it got to be Russia? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the intentions were. It could be a rival company. It could just be, you know, it could be a, a whole host of things. You could waste all your time trying to think about Damn. the intentions. But yeah, it's interesting because we talked about the Twitter breach a couple of weeks ago. What number are they at Tesla, though? Are they, like, high up in the company? I have no idea. We talked about the Twitter breach, right? And it was yeah. just somebody from HR. Yeah. So that's kind of like the in that these people use. It's the social engineering, as you say, mm -hmm. of, like, you know, making friends with somebody on the inside, taking advantage of that power dynamic. Yeah. Because people are more fallible than the security systems that these companies have in place. So if mm -hmm. you can manipulate the right person. And they ultimately control the security. So. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder if that person got compensated. Frick, man. Should. They should. 100%. Like, congratulations. Here's a $10,000 bonus. <laughs> <sighs> That'd kind of be like. Yeah. I don't know. But I, yeah, it's just, it's just crazy to think. Or at least like here's a Tesla. Because Elon says that he buys his own Teslas at MSRP. Yeah. Like he doesn't give him, I'm sure there's a workaround. He probably, but give him a Tesla. That'd be cool. Yeah, for sure. That'd be cool. A malware free Tesla. Yeah. That could have screwed up so much. For Do you know how much money that, that, that he saved that company? Tesla? And, well, we, we don't know, right? Like, could he have, in theory, plugged a USB in and and completely destroyed Tesla's whole software infrastructure? Maybe, but we don't know to the we, extent yeah. that the malware would have been yeah. effective or not. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure they have super tight security. Yeah. But yeah, nothing is sacred, really. No. So keep that in mind. And you're right to be skeptical of yeah. giving your information yeah. when it comes to stuff. Like but that. I am an optimist, though. That's the thing. And I want to think that everybody has good intentions. Yeah. But anyway, friggin' Instagram. Not this man. <laughs> yeah. Who, who knows what what uh, who he was representing, what organization or government. Or it's just business. funny that it has to be Russia. It's always Russia or China. Yeah. It's too bad. I don't know. Anyway, um, so my brother-in-law is starting his business. Yes. You told me about this for 30 seconds. Yep. Um, What's he doing? Bricked. It's a masonry company. So if you guys are, need some brickwork done, need some masonry done, custom fireplaces, chimneys, whatever it is, hit him up. He's got like... He Does started, he do some good work? Yeah, dude. He started bricklaying when he was like five. Oh, wow. He's 30. Wow. So like he, he's got a lot of experience. Uh, Quarter he's, century. Yeah, he's really good at what he does. So uh, if you guys want to look him up, Bricked Masonry. Um, How do you spell it? Congrats. B-R-I-C-K-E-D Masonry. Does he have social media or anything like he's that? He's got a Facebook page, an Instagram. Cool. He's got his email, BrickedMasonry at Gmail for right now. Um, Let's go. Yeah. So shout out to Mario. Congrats, bro. Congrats, Mario. Yeah. Um, what else is going on? It's pretty cool. Starting a business, you know, this is, is this his first business? This is very, yes. This is, there's very few feelings, man. Very few feelings. Like when you start a company, you're so excited. It's so exciting. You know what I mean? What's his headspace like? He's very excited. Yeah. He was thrilled. He had a couple projects lined up. He's got a couple projects lined up. He's doing, sweet, he's yeah. doing a few odd jobs in between. Right. Like today, I think he's doing a roof, but he's got the equipment to do it. So yeah. he's just like trying to get his name out there. Um, he's good friends. He's actually family with a large developer here in Chatham, Kent. Really? Who owns a good portion of Chatham now. So That's a fantastic relationship. So yeah. And he, they were texting back and forth. He showed me the conversation. He's building like 15 houses that need bricks. So like wow. if he could get in, I told him, I said, you just got to get in with the right crowd and shake hands and meet people. Yeah. So. Well, if we look at what's happening in, in the housing market and in the mm -hmm. building market, yeah, right? Because like you said, there's a lot of demand for stuff like this right now. Yeah. So, and there's not a lot of companies doing it that specialize in masonry. Like there's a lot of construction companies and stuff. But I could I, name construction, like as somebody who's very uninvolved, yeah. completely detached from that industry, I could name construction companies, but yeah. I couldn't tell you a single other uh, <laughs> company that specializes in masonry that I could think of. No. So. Bricked. Bricked. That's the new household name. Yeah. So he could build you a whole house if you wanted to. I don't know. He could brick the whole house. Fair. He could brick it. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. I like brick houses. Yeah. I like stone houses. Yeah. Those are cool. Stone is cool. Sarah really likes stone too. Um, guys, <laughs> 
Hard 75 is going terrible. Um, I'm going to have to have a serious conversation with myself. <laughs> I just got to get after it. I just got to get after it. I'm just making excuses. Um, do you still want to do it? Still want to do it. Do you really want to do it? I don't want to do the two 45-minute workouts. That is freaking daunting. That's daunting. Make dude. a real deal with yourself. Maybe. Be real with yourself. About and first of all, huge respect to you for admitting that you're not doing it. This is my accountability. Because so many people. The people listening like, and watching are yeah. my accountability group. Yeah. Nobody he, comments. Leave a comment. Right. But this is my accountability. But group. he's making himself vulnerable to the few people who are watching. Yeah. And not just being like, oh, yeah, it's going great. Yeah, yeah. it's easy. It's easy. Yeah. You know? No. So like respect for keeping it real. But the thing is, in the back of my mind, I'm always like, I want to get going on it. But I'm also making smaller incremental changes. Like for t today, I was sitting there. I've been batch working my emails, which has been nice. And I took a break, sat in my chair, shut my computer screen off, and I meditated for two minutes. I set a timer. And even that, I notice a huge cool. benefit from yeah. that. Drinking more water. I'm still drinking lots of water. The sleep thing is kind of like whatever. But anyway, I'm still struggling with it, guys. Uh, hopefully next week I'll have a positive update. So. Yeah, I don't know. I've got like a very different viewpoint on I know self-improvement I know I don't know to I me know. like doing it all at once is too overwhelming to it is overwhelming to make changes that you can solidify I don't know yeah so that's just gonna be a yeah we'll make it a theme I'll update you guys maybe uh, no we'll just I'll keep you up to date on what's going on there okay you wanted to talk about meditation you said you watched some oh so I had to do a lot of driving I am doing a lot of driving today so when I drive I like to listen to podcasts yeah get a little learnt Learn, Double Windsor trip. Learn a couple things. Um, and I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he was on the Joe Rogan Experience two years ago. Naval Ravikant. Ravikant? And he Never just... Never heard of this guy. He's, some, he's like an angel investor. He's just really brilliant. And he had like a lot of... Like, you know these things deep down, but until somebody says them and until you like really listen to it... Isn't that a great feeling? When you hear something that you know, but there's some sort of denial or like cognitive dissonance where yeah. you, you just kind of avoid or ignore something. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody called, it feels like they call you out. Yeah. Is it that kind of feeling? Yeah. I love that. So for example, yeah. some of you, actually you guys probably don't know this. Um, I've been wanting a new vehicle for a long time. I, I really like vehicles and uh, it's basically all I talk about. My wife loves me. And like <laughs> I go to the dealerships yeah. probably like once a week. I just go cruise. You and do not. I do. It's yeah, I do. Um, uh -huh. The, the, coming from the guy who said one of my favorite quotes, if you hang around the barbershop, you're bound to get a haircut. Yeah. You got to listen to your own parable. <laughs> so anyway, guys, and this guy said, so yeah, like it's okay to have desires. But one thing that humans do to a fault is we desire way too many things all at once. Yeah. And then we end up like, like we're just stressed. Oh like all God, we just overwork our minds. I right. Know. And so that was one. The other thing on the, on the vehicle topic, I want to, I, I need... I want a new vehicle. <laughs> you almost used the N word. <laughs> <laughs> I want a new vehicle. I don't need one. I don't need one. Anyway. It's like and a so self affirmation. He on. says, he's like, and he's, he, it was like he was talking to me. He was like, once you get that new vehicle in three to three months to a year, 100%. it's going to sync right in and you're going to want the next. 100%. Time. So it's like, oh. anyway, so I made a deal with myself. I'm still going to keep looking. I love looking at vehicles. I like, it's just, it's a passion of mine. I used, to, I used to draw cars when I was a kid. I love vehicles. Okay. When my truck literally cannot drive anymore, that is when I'm going to get my truck done. Unless Toyota decides to sponsor us, in which case, yeah, that's true. It's a deal, yeah. but that's what's going on. Anyway, he was talking about that. He was talking about so much stuff. He was talking about meditation, which, which it was super inspiring. He's talking about how you don't necessarily even need a guided meditation. Like just sit there, close your eyes. Don't even focus on your breathing. Just do it and just see what happens. If and that, you're not deliberate about shutting your mind yeah. for a few minutes, yeah, that's never going to just happen by chance Yeah, in your day to day. Yeah. Right. Like, especially in an era where, you know, your phone is glued to you, or maybe you have a neural link implanted in your brain. Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't intentionally set aside a time to just be quiet and be alone with yourself, it's never going to happen. Yeah. You know, when, like when you're in the shower, you're thinking about how to properly bathe. Yeah. You know, like when you're brushing your teeth, part of your mind is devoted to the, the teeth brushing. Exactly. Right? 
when you're driving you're, you're focused thinking, on driving right not that's dying worse yeah. yeah yeah so he anyway guys i don't know if you're into podcast well if you're listening to this you're into podcasts the joe rogan experience you you probably <laughs> true you probably you probably know um about the joe rogan you probably heard He's about a few it spots above us in terms of couple spots we're, we're catching up but um it was a really interesting podcast on self-development he's I, I didn't even know him before I listened. To, I just really? turned it on by chance. And it was a super engaging, a lot about self-development and stuff. He has a lot of really interesting ideas on, um, like, for example, he thinks that everybody in the world should be rich. And then he just kind of, like, breaks it all down and how if you make everybody rich, they do what they love, like, all this stuff. He he, he broke it all down. I'm so tired, I can't explain this right yeah. now. Do you mean? Well, you know what? That's interesting what you say about, like, once you get the thing that you want, you want the next thing. Yeah. And I think two like innate characteristics of human beings, which are both good and bad are one, we're very adaptive people. Mm -hmm. We're very adaptive creatures as human beings, which can be great to like acclimatize to new environments and, and evolve, but it can also be a bad thing because you can get comfortable and take things for granted way too quickly. There's this thing called hedonic adaptation, where if you give yourself something, then you want more. You get comfortable with it, you know? You get the truck, and then you want a better truck, or then you want some other thing, or a new TV, or or it goes on and on. Exactly. You know? It's all about delayed gratification. Yeah, I think, and it's it's also a great thing to be, to be adaptive, but it can work to our detriment, too. Yeah. And the other thing is, I think that, that like, intrinsic desire to want the next thing also helps us evolve as a species, right? Because you want to be a prosperous, it's important. productive person who wants yeah. the better thing. Yeah. And as a society, we evolve and we and we do more and we we become better and yeah. better by some definition. But it keeps us going to always strive for something different. Yeah. But it's crazy because if you're if you don't like remind yourself of where you came from and try to be as grateful as you can, then it's so easy to adapt and just take yeah. things for granted. Yeah. So anyway, it was a really interesting podcast, that's guys. Cool. And uh, I think that's a really important lesson. Mm -hmm. And if you have some time and you're going for a drive or whatever, listen to the podcast. His name's Naval Ravikant. And Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan. Gotcha. That's basically it on my end, dude. Yeah, we had a few topics today, didn't we? Yeah, I feel like we rambled a little bit. Again, I'm sorry. I'm I'm pretty tired today. Um, so I couldn't really tell. Yeah. You're not acting like slow or anything weird like I that. I feel slow. I feel sluggish. You're masking it pretty well. I'm probably going to go to bed after I get back from work. Really? Here. I'm tired. Yeah. No, five's a lot. Yeah. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this week's episode of the podcast. We'll see you next week. Cheers.